Mary Bolger here, naturalist with Iowa County Conservation, and I want to welcome you to a fun little series that we're doing this December. Um, we are, or I'm doing a series that where we are making our um, some homemade gifts, and so when we're making homemade gifts, we are doing that to um, encourage people to maybe use what they have around the house um, and give something that is really meaningful that the whole family could put together and then give as a holiday gift. So there's lots of fun things. I have four things that I'm going to be making and today we are going to be making a um, some bird suet. So some bird food that we can put you can put outside and help feed birds or other wildlife. Um, but it's fun to make as the whole family. You could give it to friends or teachers or grandparents. Lots of fun things to do. Um, so um, I'm just gonna quick go over some of the materials that we're going to need today. Um, then we're gonna go through the really simple process of making it. Um, if you have any questions as we're going along here, um, just go ahead and type those in the comments and I'll try to keep my eye on here um, on the screen to make sure that we are um, answering those. So, all right, so really simple ingredients to make this easy suet recipe. And so what is suet? Suet is a type of wildlife food that we put out there. It has fats in it like um, lard or um, Crisco. Um, it usually has peanut butter in it, so proteins. Um, also, and then grains. Today we're going to be putting oatmeal in, and then it has burnt seed. Um, so there are lots of suet recipes out there. This one is made of probably stuff you have around the kitchen right now, so that's why we're using it. It's really easy. Um, kids can help you with it too, and make some fun suet for um, wildlife watching or gift giving or anything like that. So let's go quick through the materials that we need, and then I am going to um, make it with you guys today. So first thing in our recipe, our ingredients, we're going to be using some peanut butter. So a cup of peanut butter, a cup of Crisco here. So those are our fats and protein. Then we're going to use a cup of cornmeal and we're going to be using two cups of oatmeal or rolled oats and two cups of uh, bird seed. Now you can use any kind of bird seed that you would like. Um, I'm using black oil sunflower seed today, um, but depending on what birds you have around your home or on neighborhood, you can use those as well. Um, so now you're going to need a stove or a hot plate um, with a pan for melting because we're going to be doing that really quickly. And of course, little ones will need some help with that, um, but still pretty very simple. You're gonna need some spoons, like a big wooden spoon or a metal spoon for stirring and getting it out of the pan and mixing things together. Measuring cups. Um, so we're using in cup increments, a half cup or a full cup is fine. And then you're gonna need some containers to put your suet mixture in because it is going to have to have some sort of mold or, um, and then it's gonna to need to be chilled. So lots of different options. Again, you can use whatever you have around the house. So you can see right here that I have a muffin tin. Um, you probably have one of those. And so one thing that people do is they actually take these little muffin liners, they line them up and you fill those with the, and those fit perfectly if you already have a suet feeder or someone has a suet feeder, they work great. You could use any size cup. So I have some plastic um, cups here as well as some paper cups. And so we'll fill these um, and Another really fun um, thing that we're going to do as well is you can use cookie cutters. So I have some holiday cookie cutters right here. This is a star shape and we're going to be using this to um, kind of mold into a shape. And with some of these, we're gonna put strings through so we can then, um, they can be hung in on branches or on trees or shrubs, whatever you would like to um, do. So, um, Let's go ahead and get started. Um, and I will post this recipe um, in the comments afterward. So you can have this recipe. So no need to um, go back and listen and, and write it down. Um, and 
So we're going to go ahead and melt our two um, fats and protein together. So we're taking our cup of peanut butter, and you can use either chunky peanut butter or not chunky peanut butter, um, whatever you have around the house or would like. Those The chunky peanut butter with the extra bits of um, of peanut are provide a little bit more energy, but any kind is fine to use. So what you want to do with this is you want to put your um, cup of peanut butter and your cup of Crisco I'm using today, your other fat, and you want to put it in the a small saucepan. Now you only want to have it on about medium heat because you don't want it to boil. You just want these things to melt together and as you're, um, as you're melting them, it'll happen pretty quickly. My peanut butter is already going. I just had my, um, my stove top up a little bit from when we started. So when you are melting these together, again, you don't want to boil it, so just on medium heat. And these are pretty soft um, fats, so they will melt pretty quickly. And so as you're doing it, you can just stir this. Now, if you're doing this with little ones, this step is probably um, something that you want to handle. Um, if you have some older kids, this is also a fun time to teach a little bit about cooking. So about measuring ingredients and um, using the stove and stuff like that. And my stuff is almost all melted. So I have a couple of spoons here because sometimes it gets a little bit stuck in the spoon. So I'm going to use it to kind of clean it off here. The peanut butter usually melts first, and then the um, Crisco or the other fat comes after. Now, why do you ask, do we need these things in the suet? Well, during the winter time, it is cold out there. And so when it comes to birds and the energy they need, we do have birds that stick around for the entire winter, like cardinals and woodpeckers, chickadees, um, dark-eyed juncos, all kinds of things, blue jays. And so they need lots of energy. If you already have bird feeders outside your house, you probably know this, and so you give them a necessary um, place to come and find food. Especially when it's very cold, we have a lot of snow cover and a lot of ice cover, it's hard for them to find food. Um, so putting out suet is a great thing in the winter time because it gives them more energy and it gives them a little bit extra um, from that, those fats and the proteins and things. All right, so my peanut butter and my Crisco are melted together. So I'm gonna turn it off and I'm gonna take it off the heat. So I'm just gonna bring it over here. I have a towel set aside and put it on that towel. Again, if you're help, having little ones help you, you may need to do this part. And the next thing that we're going to do is mix the cup of cornmeal in here. And you're going to mix that cup of cornmeal, mix it in really well. And so that cornmeal is combined. It's going to get, it's going to be really liquidy at this point, but it'll start to get a little bit thicker. Next, you're going to add both your two cups of oatmeal and your two cups of bird seed. By the time you are done stirring all of these things in, it's gonna be pretty thick. I got the oatmeal in right now, still pretty thin. At this point, if you've ever made no-bake cookies, that's what it looks like. You're, you're adding lots of oatmeal and things like that. So I usually add one cup at a time, give it some good stirs here, and there's one cup of bird seed and another cup of bird seed. And so by the time you are finished, it is gonna be about the consistency of your no-bake cookies, maybe a little bit thicker, but still very easily easy to scoop out and to put into your molds, whatever you're going to be using. So I am going to kind of show you a little picture of what it looks like. I'll bring it up close to the camera here so you can see the consistency. You can see that it is, it doesn't hold together very well. And so this is a great time to put into our cups 
or molds or whatever we're going to be doing. And so what I'm going to do first thing is fill my my cups. So if you have a um, muffin tin and you just want to put it straight in there, that would work. I find that putting it into cups and then these help me get them out of the trays a little bit easier. So this is a great um, chance for um, little ones to help you spoon this stuff out. I usually take a tablespoon like this one and you can let it cool just slightly if it's too hot for little ones to handle. And then you want to spoon it into your cups. So I'm gonna fill one of my, each of my cups and then we'll fill the cookie cutter um, container. And you can fill them all the way to the top. Now, as an alternative, if you wanna make those traditional um, square shaped suet cakes. What you can do is take a cake pan and you can just put all of this into the cake pan and um, kind of smush it down a little bit or pack it down and then put it in to chill. So this recipe calls for um, chilling overnight in the freezer. So everything kind of sets together really well and that's when the fats like the peanut butter and the Crisco will um, kind of come together and make that solid suet cake. Where, you, where do you want to store your um, suet? In the refrigerator until you're ready to put it out. Alright, so I filled three of my um, containers here. Now what should you do if you want to have them as hanging containers? Well. Um, you can take little bits of twine or string and you can put them in the top. What I do, which is really easy, is I take some sort of like skewer or chopstick or a little thin something and I push these down into when the suet is still warm and I cover them up and make sure that string is down in there. Now the great thing about these, using string or twine, is it's something that Mother Nature will recycle. So that means that birds will maybe use them in their nests, so um, you can leave them, let the um, birds eat the suet, and then go out, or and then they'll, they'll reuse them, and um, you don't have to go retrieve these strings, because Mother Nature will reuse them. All right, so, Let's take a close look at our um, cups. So I filled up my cups right here. I put that string in top right there, um, and then I packed down. Now this is a kind of an important step. You wanna pack that down just to make sure it's very full and it's, it stays together really well when you chill it. So one more kind of neat thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna use this cookie cutter. So you could either um, fill that a cookie sheet or a cake pan with the suet and then after they've chilled a little bit cut out like stamp the cookies but I found if you have cookie cutters like this that are just kind of uh, sides and no top it works best if you fill these cookie cutters you take your I'm going to take my skewer and make a um, a hole for a um, string to go through because these particular ones, you can either hang them or you can make them into um, a cookie um, and put them in that regular kind of squarish. They will fit pretty nicely. And in fact, most cookie cutters are small enough to do that. So with these ones, I like to fill them all the way to the top and make a nice big suet cake. And then I'm gonna take my skewer here and I'm gonna pick a spot and I'm gonna make a hole right now so I don't have to, it's a little bit harder after they've cooled. And so then I'll just stick this whole thing right into the freezer or the refrigerator and it will um, harden into the mold shape that I want. And then when it's done, I can carefully take it out and you'll have a shape um, for your suet. So. Um, so 
that's our basic kind of fun suet making. Again, it's a really fun activity for um, whole families, for little ones to do. And you can also give these as great holiday gifts. Maybe you have a member of your family or friends that loves to feed the birds. Um, this is a great thing to make for them to give as holiday gifts. Another fun um, addition to this, you can have the kids do a little bit of customization. So you can take a brown paper bag um, and then draw, let me see if I can bring that up there, draw a bird on there and write for the birds or kind of picture they want to, whoever they're giving it to as a gift. Um, so I'm going to put a couple of resources in the comments of this post for you. So I'll put uh, the recipe for this suet here. Um, I will also put um, a really great um, informational guide about different kinds of bird seed and what kinds of birds like them. So this is a list of our common backyard birds or feeder birds that we see. And some of them are really specific in what they like to eat. So if you want to attract a certain kind of bird, let's say you want to attract cardinals to your feeder, those beautiful cardinals, then you should probably put out black oil sunflower. Um, so I'll put those out for, um, put those in the comments, this um, document here, so you can use that. I'm also going to share a link of a really neat resource that was made by the um, 4-H um, University of Illinois um, Council, and they actually have this really neat bird bingo. So let's say you want to learn more and go view some birds outside. Um, this is a really neat document that you can actually pull up on your phone, and it has pictures of all of our common birds that we have here in both Iowa and Illinois. And you can click on them, you can listen to their sound and learn more about them. So great resource that I'll put a link for in the comments as well. All right, well, I wanna thank you for watching and for joining me today. If you have any questions about suet making or what to feed the birds during this time of year, um, go ahead and put those in the comments. I'll keep an eye on the comments for, for a while here and answer those if they come up. Um, and thank you very much. Make sure you join us. We have three more homemade um, gifts virtual in our virtual series here. Um, next time we are going to be making um, homemade Play-Doh, um, something that the kids will definitely enjoy and then play with for long after that. Um, and we'll be making a couple of other things um, next week as well. So thanks very much for watching today. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.